Welcome to the Queen Pin Podcast, the show that's about becoming our best selves, finding our passions, and being happy. I'm your host, Raina Simone, and today's episode is about the benefits of journaling in all its forms. I have a great show planned for you today, so make sure to listen all the way through. So, I get it. When people think of the word journaling, they typically remember movies where the main character had a diary where she wrote down all of her secret crushes, dreams for the future, and hot gossip at school. But that isn't exactly what I'm here to talk to you about today. I mean, it sort of is, but in a less immature and stereotypical light. I want to talk to you about the impact journaling can have on your health and some easy ways to integrate journaling into your your daily routine. So first, the benefits of journaling. I'm sure you've already heard that journaling can reduce your stress levels and boost your mood, but while researching, I found some interesting positive effects journaling can have on your health. The first one being improving immune function. According to the article, Five Powerful Benefits of Journaling, found on intermountainhealthcare.org, written by Casey Bailey, Improving immune function is just one of many great health benefits you can receive from keeping a journal. Bailey writes, Believe it or not, expressive writing can strengthen your immunity and decrease your risk of illness. Those who journaled boasted improved immune system functioning, as well as lessened symptoms of asthma and rheumatoid arthritis. Expressive writing has been shown to improve liver and lung function and combat certain diseases. It has even been reported to help the wounded heal faster. Another benefit Miss Casey Bailey writes about is keeping your memory sharp. The way she puts it, journaling helps keep your brain in tip-top shape. Not only does it boost memory and comprehension, it also increases working memory capacity, which may reflect improved cognitive processing. Now, we've all been told at some point in our educational careers to write things down so we remember them better. But why not write down things that occur in your day-to-day life? I'm 90% sure there's been a day in your life when you couldn't remember what you had for dinner the previous night or where you put your keys. Journaling doesn't just improve your memory of things you write about. It improves every single aspect of your memory. So when you need your keys, you'll remember exactly where you put them. But aside from the unusual benefits of journaling, There's also the well-known upside that journaling can help you manage your emotions better. Journaling is pretty much just writing down your feelings so you can analyze and understand them better, and your emotional intelligence can grow as a result of your probable newfound self-awareness. According to an article published by the University of Rochester Medical School, journaling can help you to prioritize your problems, fears, and concerns, track any recurring symptoms so you can recognize triggers and learn ways to better control them, and provide opportunity for positive self-talk and identifying negative thoughts and behaviors. If you're not convinced about journaling yet, I've compiled a list of all the reasons why you should keep a journal, and it is posted on the link in my Instagram bio, and in the description of this video if you're listening on YouTube. So now I've covered the why, why you should start journaling. But if you're not sure how to get started, keep listening. So what options are out there for types of journals you can keep? Now, when I say types of journals you can keep, I'm referring to the different mediums or platforms where you can store your journal content. I like to separate the types of journals first into two categories, physical and digital. Everyone knows you can write down your thoughts with good old pen and paper, but in this digital age, there are more options than just that. For digital journals, you can keep a running Google Doc or Word document. You could type your heart out in a simple notes app. You could use a pre-structured journal app, or you could even record yourself to create an audio journal, kind of like a private podcast. Now, all of these are just suggestions, and if you do decide to start journaling, you might want to test out a few different methods to see what works best for you. I've also linked an article in my Instagram bio containing 20 different types of journals, So if nothing I mentioned today works for you, maybe you can find something there. So how can you make the most of your journal? To make the most of your journal, you'll want to write about an experience you had and how it affected your feelings. Kind of like in an 8th grade level cause and effect essay, you should try your best to be aware of how you feel when you're writing and why you feel that way, in order to identify the causes and effects of the situation. 
By identifying these two things, you'll better be able to find reoccurring emotional triggers and be able to come up with a personal plan on how to fix them. You can also become more aware of the triggers while you are in situations, which can potentially help you avoid a negative response to a situation. A simple example of this is writing in your journal about you being mad that day, and then a separate sentence about how your brother broke a family heirloom. Instead of making these two things separate sentences, try to see how they connect. Try saying, my brother broke my favorite family heirloom, and because that happened, I was mad for the rest of the day. Because is the key word here due to the fact that it signifies a cause and effect sentence. Another way to make the most out of your journal is logging mood fluctuations throughout the day. This may seem like a lot of work, but once you incorporate it into your routine, it'll become easy. By logging mood fluctuations, you can see daily or weekly patterns in your mood, like being grumpy in the mornings and around lunchtime, and being happy on Friday afternoons. So now, finally, I'm going to tell you about two of the best apps I've found for digital journaling. The first one is called Tangerine. Now, I love this one because you not only get to journal, but it's also a habit tracker. For the journaling tab on the app, there are guided journaling templates that you can try, but there's also an option to have a blank journal entry giving you the freedom to write however you please. Now, a downside of this app is the app's templates. You only get a few of them for free, and to unlock all of them, it would cost you $5 per month or $30 per year. But this price also includes being able to add a passcode or touch ID to your journal, unlimited habits, insights, reminders, and adding photos to your journal. So a whole lot comes with that price, but to some, it might be an outrageous amount to pay for a digital journal. It all depends on the person. The second journaling app I want to tell you about is Friday. So this app pretty much does it all. It's a journal, a planner, and a to-do list with insights, integrations, and much more. And this is just the free version I'm describing. The pro version is $6 a month and gets you unlimited response history, a goals tracker section, more advanced insights, and insight download options. The only downside about this app is that it isn't really an app. You can't download it to your mobile device as you can with Tangerine, but it works on your laptop browser and it's all a matter of preference. Okay, so for people who don't find either of these apps helpful to them, some very popular ones are the 5-Minute Journal app, Day One, Penzu, and Dailyo Journal. Now, if you're not one for structured journaling but you still want a digital journal, Don't fret, because traditional note-taking apps such as Evernote are safe, secure, and ready for you to use. So after listening to this episode, let me know in the comments section of today's Instagram or Facebook post or on YouTube if there are any specific topics you'd like me to talk about regarding journaling or any other topic. If you have a specific type of journaling method you'd like to hear more about from me, just send me a DM and I'll make sure to reply as soon as possible. All right, guys, that's all for today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Queenpin Podcast if you haven't already. Follow our YouTube channel for exclusive content coming soon. And check back in on February 17th for an exciting new episode about friend groups and their impact on your life. Stay powerful, Queenpins.